Today we're going to take our next step. We've talked about percent and decimals and fractions, but now we're going to learn how to solve percent problems. The whole deal on this, guys, is setting up your proportion correctly. So there's three key things that you need to know in order to do that. When I'm setting up proportions with percents, the first thing I'm going to do is take the number in front of my percent sign, and I'm going to put it over, anybody want to take a guess? Percent means out of? 100. 100. So whatever is in front of the percent sign goes over 100. On the other side, there are two keywords that I'm going to be looking for. Those keywords are is and of. Another way to think about those two is what they represent. The is is the part of what I'm looking at. The of is the whole, or how, what is my total options. Okay? So, hence, we're talking about parts and wholes. Something is a part of a whole. Notice how those work? Is a part of a whole. So those words are going to tell you where to focus in. I'm even going to go so far as to give you an order to look for these to set up your proportion. The first thing you should look for, guys, is the percent sign. Why? Because it's like this big red flag in the problem. When you see a number in front of the percent sign, bam, I know exactly where it goes. The second one I want you to focus in on is actually the word of. Okay? That may seem a little odd that we're going to the bottom of the next one, but the, the deal here is the consistency of of. Of is what, what goes in this piece of your proportion down here is always going to be directly after the word of. So that's going to be a really big hint. If it says, of what number, I don't know that. That's going to be my variable. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, one of these three spots will always have a variable in it. More commonly, we're going to use X. So just get used to doing that. The last thing we're going to do is look for whatever is left. And there's a reason for that. The reason of is second, guys, is because it is so consistent. The number that is with is is going to change based on where it is in the sentence. If it's at the start of the sentence, it's the number before is. If it's at the end of the sentence, it's the number after is. So because that gets confusing, let's focus on the stuff that is always solid. Always solid is my percent sign. Bam, that goes there. Always solid is the word of. Whatever's right after of goes there. Normally it's going to be a number. If it's not a number, that's my variable. If I have two numbers for the percent and the of, my last piece is my variable. If I have a variable I don't know the percent, or I have a variable I don't know what my of is, whatever number is in the problem is going to be your last piece. Okay? So this will make a little more sense as we start doing some of these problems. But basically your part or your quantity associated with the word is, the whole is the number following the word of, your percent, the number with the percent sign. So we're going to use this circle graph. Suppose there are 300 students at York Middle School. Determine the number of students that have chips as a snack. So there's our task for determining the numbers. So the first thing we do is look at our circle chart. What number is with chips? 18 percent. Good. So what is going to go over my 100? Is there anyone who doesn't understand why? No. Good. So our next part is we're going to look for the part or the whole. They only gave us one other number, this 300 students. Is that the part or the whole? The whole. The whole. So where's that going to go? Make sense? Yes, sir. So what do I not know? The oh. is or the part. That's what I'm trying to find out. So now we've just got our pr proportion. We're just doing our looking for our magic box, right? Yes. How do I go from 100 to 300? Times three. Times three. So 3 times 18 is going to give me 54. So the answer would be... 54 over 100. No, it is not 54 over 100. 300. No, it's not over 300. 54 students. 54 students. Technically, because it's a word problem... You have to write 54 students. Like chips. Okay? Does that make sense? So again, our whole key, our focus on all of today's lesson is setting our proportion up correctly. Once we set the proportion up correctly, 
Then all we got to do is the math. The math is actually the easy part on this for most of these questions. The key is putting all my numbers in the correct spot. So now we're going to use another scenario. The cafeteria at Middletown, York, York, the Midtown York Middle School surveyed 575 students about their favorite food. Determine the number of students that responded for each of the following. So again, we're following, determining the number of students. So the first thing they gave me was 8% like chicken. So what is going to go over my 100? 8%. So what's going over? 8%. 8. Be careful about saying percent. If I do that, guys, I have actually made that incorrect. That would be say the same as say, that would be the same as saying 0 0.08 over 8 over 100. That's not that. When I put it over 100, that percent sign goes away. Okay. Now the key is what was that other piece of information they gave us? The 575 students. Is that my part or my whole? Whole. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. So where's that going to go? Make sense? Yeah. So, here's where it gets a little more complex. I'm going to teach you guys something we haven't taught you yet on these proportions. And this is the step back thought. Sometimes if I see that my numbers aren't going to go really well, it might be easier to step back before I go forward. So, can I break 100 down into one of its factors that's going to go into 575 a lot better? That's also going to go into 8. So I could divide both of these by 2, right? That gives me 4 over 25. Is it easier to go 25 to 575? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to go what? Times 23. Wait, but you're dividing 100 into 2. How would that be 25? Uh, you're right. I should have divided by 4. Should have divided by four. You're, you were, thanks for the catch there. Wow, big brain actually showed up. Oh. So now I'm doing two times 23 and I get? 46. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Okay, so now this one really isn't a word problem because we're just answering a subset of it. So we can go with just 46 students. Yes? Because I divided uh, 8 and 100 by 4. So I basically I simplified my percent to make a number that was easier to get to 575. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. Now I've got 20%. So what's going over my 100? What do you think, Nicole? Easy, right? That's the beauty of that percent sign. That's telling me exactly what's going over 100. Is my 575 going to switch at all? No. no. Nope. So it's going down here. So we kind of go through that same process. Can I divide both these by 4? Yes. Yep. That's going to get me 5 25ths. So now how do I go 25 to 575? What's my magic box? Just to make sure. I, I apologize. I probably shouldn't have just done that in my head for you guys. So 575 and, oh no, I'm sorry. We're going the other way. Yeah, 575 divided by 25. It's going to go twice. Gave me a 50. 75 is going to go three times. So that tells me 23. So that tells me my magic box was 23. I did, I could have, but you had to know how I got from 25 to 575. So to do that, I, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I can divide to figure out what I, ha what I had to do to get there. So now I've got 5 times 23. <coughs> Excuse me, you give me? 115. Yeah. How are we trying it so far, guys? Thumb meter. So far? Cameron? Mikey, Mickey, Haley, TJ. Are you recording? Yeah, we're recording. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. 
Now here's where the percent and that of and that is is really going to take effect, guys. So we're going to go through in that order. First thing I want to do is find the percent sign. Huh? Yeah. It's because I had the same number on the bottom. That's, that's the only reason that works. Can we do the next one for ourselves, too? Uh, we're going to get a chance in a minute. I want to make sure you understand this first. Okay, so <laughs> what's going to go over my 100? So there's a number, there's a number, there's, oops, there's one of those key terms now, of. So what's right after of? So what's going to go on the bottom? 80. 80. What's going to go on the top? 30. So what do we put for something we don't know? X. Variable. X. Variable, X. Will 100 go to 80 easy? Yes. yes. No. Not really. No. But I have an easy simplification, right? If I divide by 10, I go to 3 tenths. How do I go 10 to 80? 80. So my magic box is times 8. So 3 times 8 gets me 24. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. What's my percent? 15% of 60, so that goes over 100. What's after of? What's after of? 60, so that's going to be my whole. So my part is? Don't know. What can I do for 15 and 100 that's going to give me a, a factor easy to go to 60? Yeah? The last one? No, I multiplied three times eight. Yeah, top five. So I, once I simplified, that's where I moved from. So again, we can step back and divide by five. That's going to get us three and twenty. How do I go from 20 to 60? <laughs> times 3. 3 times 3 is going to give me 9. You guys seeing this? Okay, I hope so. Now, you get to try some on your own. You have 8 minutes. Try the next, finish the page by yourself. Okay, the first one, relatively simple. Here's my percent of 220, so that means 55 of 100, 220 on this side. Easy step back on this one. If I divide by 5, I get 11 and 20. Going 20 to 220 is times 11. 11 times 11 gets me 121. Guys, quiet down. Boy, my next one, we've got 25%, so 25 is over 100, of 4, again, a good step down, I can divide both those by 25, dealing with money, you guys should be able to do that, so 4 to 4, it's a 1 to 1, that means that's a 1, okay, next one, get a little more complex, but if you follow what we're saying, you're going to be okay, so here's a key there, of the 300, sheep in the flock. 30% are white. What is the total number of white sheep? Should be. So again, start with your percent because that's always going to be the one that should stick right out to you. Now the key is I got to figure out that 300. Is that my part or my whole? I see the of right there, right? That makes that my whole. How did I go 100 to 300? So that makes it 90. But because this is a word problem, 90 sheep are white. Okay. Next one. Original. Sale price, 25% off the original price. What is the discount? So this one gets a little more complex. The percent is still really easy. That's why we start with it. Our key is, where does that 44 go? Is that the part or the whole? It's the whole. The original price. 
Oh. There's my hole. If it's on sale, it can be less than that, right? Yes, sir. If you're, if you're buying for something on sale and paying more than the real price, you need to work on your shopping skills. Okay? So that's going to go down to 44. But, again, 100 to 44, not real easy. Do I have a simplification I can do? I can divide by 25. Is it easy to go 4 to 44? Yes. 11. So $11 is that. Seriously, stop. $11 is the discount. How are you guys feeling? Good. 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 That's always good news. Okay, go ahead and turn to your second page, guys. Okay, guys, let's look at this. Let's look at this next part. Right here, it says 75 is 15% of what number? Okay. So what do we know, guys? What do we know? Talk to her. Okay. 75 is 15% of... Alright. 15%, so we know the percent, right? Yes, ma'am. Good. Okay, and is this 75? Is that the part or the whole? That's the whole. That's the whole. Oh, part. Part. oh, I hear part and whole. Wait, listen to what it's saying, guys. First of all, you have is, okay? But 75 is 15%. 75 is the 15% of what number? So that is the, that is the part. What number is our what? This what number? What is that going to be? That's your whole. That's your whole, and do we know the whole? Oh, no. No. That is our variable. Good. 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 Okay. Oh, wait. Are we okay so far? Oh. Are we okay so far? Oh, I need to put my part. Okay. No. What? I know. I know how your um, is now. You just divide that by five, and then once you divide that by five, you have the box for the. Good. You're, we're looking for mystery number, right? And so Courtney said, okay, this 1500, I can divide by five. Okay? 15 divided by five is what? Three. No, you can already, you can already multiply 15 and. Yeah, I'm, 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 okay. Good. Absolutely. Courtney said we could. We, he wants to break it down. That's okay. Can we do it? You can do it the other way. Okay. You can do it. Are they both correct? Absolutely. So 100 divided by five is what? 20. Okay. So right here, I go from three to 75. How? By five. I'm not sure. By what? I feel like the other one was so much clearer. Yeah. By 25. Okay. Now, so 20 times 25 is what? What's 20 times 25? Okay. Is this what we got? Do you agree? Yes. yes. Okay, so can you do it either way? Tell us what you did. I multiplied 50 by 5 and I got, and then I multiplied 100 by 5 and got 5. Okay, same thing, guys. He said this 15, oh, that's easy. Times 5 gives you 75. 100 times 5 gives you 500. Either way is correct. Either way is correct. Okay. Good. Wait, you gotta go up here. All right. So the whole is 500. Nine is 36% of what number? Okay, so I know my percent. I'm putting it over 100. I'm going to fill in my percent. Okay, again, nine is our what? 
Is it part or is it whole? Okay. It is the part. And my what number is our variable? We don't know that yet. Exactly. We don't know that yet. So what are we going to do here? Divide by 9. Divide by 9? Yep. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. How did we go from 36 to 9? No, say Divide by four. So one hundred divided by four is what? One hundred divided by four? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Good. I'm gonna stop right here. Any questions so far? Any questions on setting it up? Okay. Right here. Seven is what percent? of 10. Okay, I'm going to start with the percent. Do I know my percent? Do I know my percent? Yes. I do? What is it? Oh, wait, never mind. I thought that that was a percent. Do I know my percent, guys? No. No, that's my X. Okay. Over 100. Okay, is 7 the part or the whole? The part. The part, right? Obviously. And then of, there's my keyword, of 10. 10 is my whole.
75 is my percent. We know that's over 100. And then what is my 90? Is it my part? How do I know? In his whole music library, right? Okay, so the question is, how many songs does he have in his whole library? We don't know that. We don't know the whole. Okay, now what? What? Oh. If the numbers are friendly, what can we do? What can I do? Divided by what? Or what? Or what? What else could I divide by? 25. And that gives me 3 over 4, right? How did I go from 3 to 90? How did I go from 3 to 90? 3 to 90, well, you have to multiply it by 30. So my mystery number is times 30. Okay, so 4 times 30 is what? That is 120. 120. And guys, be careful. Be careful because I've seen this as I was walking around. Make sure to go back to that simplified form. If you start using that to get your mystery number, make sure to go back to that denominator and, do, and use the simplified version. Okay? All right. Wait, how did you get 120? Right. What, what's the She thought you wrote 10 4. 4 times 3 is 12, and then 40 times 30 divided by 30. Right. So we went 3 times 30 is 90, 4 times 30 is 120. Guys, you can also think about it logically. If 95%, you're at, or I'm sorry, 75%, it's 90 songs. Okay, does 120 songs make sense? <gasps> yes. Okay, if you had a crazy number like 400 or 500, is that going to make sense? No. no. That's not going to make sense. So think about it logically when you get your answers. Okay, well, let's look at number six. Peyton spent 60% of her money to buy a new television. If the television cost three hundred dollars, here's my question: How much money did she have? Okay, so we know we know my percent. Okay, now is three hundred my part or my whole, and why? Why is it the part? Do you think, Ari? Okay, so the television cost $300, $300, okay, and she spent 60% of her money, right? But we want to know how much she started with, right? So that, so 300 is my part, and then our whole, well, we don't know. So what am I going to do here? Divide by 10, okay? That gives me 6, and then what? Good. Now, so I'm going to go here. Six, three hundred, by what? Fifty. Do we agree? Does six times fifty, think about it, right? That equals three hundred, so I'm going to go ten times fifty gives me what? So my part was... No, that's right. Good. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Questions? Huh? Oh, left it in the car. That's a good question. Okay. All right, guys.
Guys, you're going to try this on your own. You're going to have 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. You can work with your table. Yeah, look at the back. We're checking your homework right now, guys. Make sure it all works out. All right. In the first year of ownership, a new car can lose 20% of its value. If a car lost 4200 of value in the first year, how much did the car originally cost? Right here is, is your keyword, originally. Okay? How, was it, how much was it to begin with? Okay? So what do I know? What do I know right now? What pieces of information do I have? Talk to me. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put my percent over 100. And then put your whole over X. Or your whole under. Okay, so my X is my whole. No. 4,200 4, is my whole. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. No. Okay, I, I kept hearing that as I walked around. No, no, it's not. No, okay, what do you think, Zach? It's your part. It's the part, right? Because it says, how much did the car originally cost, guys? This is how much value it's lost, right? This is how much value it's lost. And then it says, how much was the car originally? But the whole amount, okay? So we don't know that. Exactly. So let's talk about what we do next. What can I do next? Can I simplify? Can I simplify? No. Yeah, absolutely. Divide by 20, that gives me 1. This. How did I go from 1 to 4,200? Times what? Times 4,200. And I think this made people nervous because it was such a big number. Okay? It was such a big number, but what is it, Jack? One. Yep. Good. So now I'm going to take 5 times 4,200. And that's going to give me 21,000. Okay? 21,000. Right here, number 8. A store is having a sale where winter clothes are 60% of the original price. Does it give you a price? No. No, it says of the original price. A sweater is on sale for $30. What was the original price of the sweater? That's my question. So I know my percent. Okay. Do I have a part or a whole? Do I have a part or a whole, guys? A part. Why? It's, it's on sale for this amount. It's on sale for this amount. Can I simplify this? Yes. Yes. How did I go from 6 to 30? Oh, now we're talking, speaking up. So what was my original amount? Fifty. Good. You didn't have to. Yes. You divided by two? Okay. Okay. Okay, so if you divided it by two, I was be right? You have the one time going. Right. Good, Mary. That works. Ty calculates that he spends 75 minutes of a school day in science class. If he spends 500 minutes in school, my question, what percent of his school day does Ty spend in science class? Okay, somebody, uh, when I was walking around over here, they said, Miss B, this is of right here. So 75 must be my whole. Okay, I know my percent, right? No, that's my question. That's my X. Put it over 100. So the question is, which is my part, which is my whole? Is 75 my whole? Uh, no. No. Why? Why? Right. 
Right. Is 75, is 75 minutes the whole school day? No. no. How many minutes is the whole school day? All right. 500 minutes. So that's my whole. Okay. So how did I go from 100 to 500? Times 5. So what do we do here? Talk to me. Divide that and divide 75 by 5. And what does that give me? 15. Very good. So my x equals. Any questions so far? Just one comment, guys. I like that someone focused on the up. But remember, it's always after up. So what was after up? A school day. So don't get confused. 75 was before the up. The after was of a school day. Then they gave you the additional information that there's 500 minutes in that school day. It was always after the up. And, and I think what confused them because of the location, but, but he's right. It, it doesn't matter where it lands as long as it is after. Okay, I think that was over here somewhere. All right. Uh, but that's a good observation that you guys had. All right, Mary. Uh, because my x, I, I don't know what I'm multiplying by 5. So to, to, to get my x, I had to do my inverse, which is divide by 5. Okay. Now right here, this one kept bothering everybody. Before 1982, pennies were 95% zinc and 5% copper. If a stack of pennies mentioned before, I don't know, when their approximate mass of 15 grams of copper. What is the total mass, here's a keyword, right, of this stack of pennies, okay? So we're looking for the total mass. What do we know? We know a percent. But guys, which ones do we use? Or which one do we use? I'm sorry. Yes. Copper, okay? Copper, she's right, because we're, we're looking at 15 grams of copper I'm going to put 5 over 100. Now, is 15 my part or my whole? My part, because my question is, what is the total? We don't know the whole. Okay? How did I go from 5 to 15? This one's pretty simple. Times 3. 100 times 3 is what? 300 what? Grams. Okay. Good. So my percent was 5, my part was 15, and my whole was 300 grand. Okay, number 11. At a zoo, an Asian elephant weighs about 3 tons and eats about 300 pounds of food a day. Um, yeah. What percentage, what percentage, here's my question, of its body weight does the elephant eat, eat each day? You need to use that hint. Guys, I have two different units. I have ton and I have pound. Okay, I need to convert. Yes, Mark. Turn it into pound. Okay, so I'm looking for percentage. That's my X. Okay, so Mark, now what? Okay, and that's how much? 6,000 because I multiplied 3 times 2,000. Is that my total? No. Yes. No. Which is what? Which is my part? It's 300, right? And then my total is 6,000. So now what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and what do I get? What's my mystery number? What's the It's what? 60. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to divide 300 by 60. What do I get, Mark? No, it is. No, he's right. He's right. Part. All right. 